Luke 16 at verse 19 following. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores. There in the Greek it's ulcerations, great pain. And longing to eat what fell, that's the same words the prodigal son longs for in Luke 15 from the pig's mouth. But here it's longing to, fe- uh, longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. That's a good place to say yuck. We're not talking about poodles trying to bring comfort. We're talking about wild animals looking for nourishment. Now you can say yuck. Amen. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. Now pause there. The rich man gets a grave. <laughs> Lazarus doesn't get a grave. He gets angels in Hades where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross from over there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so they will also not come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. And this is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Father, may the word of my mouth, the thought, the meditation the heart of all here today, be acceptable or in the mighty name of Jesus become acceptable. You alone are our strength, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. A most unusual story. It's the only story Jesus tells that's recorded that gives a name. Lazarus. Now is this the same Lazarus that's raised from the dead in John's Gospel? Well that's possible. And yet, Lazarus is a variation of the name of Eleazar. If you remember from the book of the Genesis, Eleazar is the servant of Father Abraham. And Jewish mythology says that uh, Father Abraham sends Eleazar out to search for the righteous. This, st- this story is actually borrowed. Seven versions of it appear in rabbinic literature. But it's actually older than that. In Egyptian mythology, Isis goes and dips her finger in water and gives it to the honored dead. So it's, it's a story that Jesus borrows, and you can see its heavy Judaistic undertones because 
the prime character here is Father Abraham. Now, why does Jesus choose Father Abraham? Because he's talking to Jews, and they think that as the children of Father Abraham, they are guaranteed salvation. They know they've got a good thing. Key to this story is back in verse 14 and 15. The Pharisees, who loved money, heard all this. That is the previous parable. The one that says, you better think now about the hereafter. I know it's the dishonest steward, but the point of the story is you better think now about what is going to happen in the hereafter and make your plans now for the hereafter. They heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, now this is Jesus. You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others. But God knows your hearts. What people value highly is detestable to God. The story is a story of reversal. The rich man is dressed in purple and fine linen. I think those details were added by Jesus. Who wears purple? In that day, royalty. Royalty. Who was, who was the head of, of the government there in the holy city, Jerusalem? Well, his name was Herod Antipas. He was grandson of Herod the Great. Guess what? He had five brothers. <laughs> this guy's wearing purple and got five brothers. Oh, my goodness. And he ends up in hell. And he asks Father Abraham, again, this is the Jewish focus, just have Lazarus come and dip the tip of his finger in water, for I am in torment here. And the reversal is this. The guy he never noticed in life is the one he wants to do something for him. And the answer is no. This Lazarus laid at the gate. He's laid there because he's just keeping laying there because he has no ability to move. He's at the point of death. He's got ulcerated sores. He can't even fend off the wild dogs any longer. And every time the rich man goes in and out, he passes this ulcerated, dying man and does absolutely nothing. And all of a sudden, when he needs something, that's his prime focus. Let Lazarus, do you, do you hear the hypocrisy in that? Let Lazarus, the guy I ignored, the guy I let die, let him come and do something for me. Can I tell you what the story is not? The story is not one of a theology of absence or a theology of scarcity. Now, Father Abraham in the story says, uh, you had your good things in your life, and, and, and now you're in torment. And Lazarus is being comforted. What this is not saying is there's only so much good and once you've had your fill of your good, that's it. Y'all remember back a chapter, Luke 15, when the father goes out to talk to the older brother? Son, you're always with me. Everything I have is yours. You see, in God's economy, the point is there's never scarcity. I don't have to lose in order for you to win in God's economy. And, and so it's not being said that there's only so much good that you're going to get. 
The question is, what do you do with the good you got? The charge is, Father Abraham is saying, you had your good in life and didn't do anything with it. You didn't even notice the one you're asking to come and give you comfort. This is not a theology of scarcity. This is an accusation of what did you do with what God gave you in this life? I'm old enough that I remember when Methodists had stewards. Y'all remember the board of stewards? I loved that name. You know what it means? Pig keeper. Ancient English stivord from the Germanic sty, S-T-Y, pig sty, pig keeper. A steward is a pig keeper. But it's from the days when the pig is what going to get your family through winter. And if you trusted someone with the family pig, you were actually placing your entire life in that person's hands. And since they were trusted with the pig, eventually they were trusted with other things. But always it was held in trust. Can I tell you, you're supposed to be a steward. That was the charge in the, in the Genesis that God created. He, he put man to, to be stewards. We think my money and God is saying who gave it to you? What are you doing with what you got? Not just money. Your life, your time, your love, your emphasis. The, the point here is the Pharisees loved wrongly. The things that man love, God despises. But now we recall the words of Jesus. Love God with everything you got. That's my paraphrase. Love your neighbor how? As you love yourself. The love of God is not in this guy. And he's wondering, how did I get here? I'm supposed to be blessed. I have purple and fine linen. I'm royal. I got all this money. People bow down to me. God says, it doesn't impress me. Eternity is fixed at the point of our death for one reason. For one reason. So that we live life by faith. If we could change it, we can do what we want the first time, and then entering eternity say, oh, I was wrong. No, no, you either believe him on this side or you don't believe him at all. And, and that's the point. Trusting in Jesus, my life is different. He's not being told here, earn your salvation by good works. He's saying, by the fruit a tree is known, words of Jesus. A good fruit cannot produce A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. Well, this bad fruit comes from somewhere. Second half of the story. Well, then send Lazarus. You always, you you notice how he knows Lazarus' name now. (laughs) He, He never even noticed him in life. But now he wants Lazarus to go here. He wants Lazarus to go there. He knows the name of Lazarus. Send Lazarus to my five brothers. And Jesus talks about himself. If they will not believe what God gives them, they're not going to believe the resurrection. If a man comes back from the dead, God will not be charged with you didn't do enough that I could be saved. Even if all you had stranded, shipwrecked on a desert island was the Old Testament, the word today is that would be enough. It would be enough for you to seek God. It would be enough for you to know there is a God and you need to seek that God. If they're not going to believe what they've got, They're not going to believe more. Whatever God gives us, God wants to know one thing. What are you going to do with it? By faith. 
Trusting now that Scripture teaches us all that we need to know for salvation, not, not did we have more. Even if a man rises from the dead. He's saying there, even if they got resurrection, even if they got New Testament. Some people are saying, I'm not going to live because I want to have fun. I want to worship myself. We're being called today to live by faith. We're being called today to, to trust God now and to be stewards, quite frankly. Instead of owners, instead of possessing possessions, which oftentimes end up possessing us, we're to be stewards. What are you going to do in order that you love your neighbor as yourself? Love this story. It's got so much in it, but y'all don't have another hour and a half to go on. And so we're going to say those are the highlights. But come back to the idea that at verse 15, Jesus is saying, don't love wrongly. What man loves, God despises. If we love rightly, we love what God loves. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen.